featured in a previous video I had modded this uh, to basically Jake E. Lee spec uh, the Friedman amp um, which is as I described last time literally a handful of mods to take it from a standard uh, you know, 2203 JMP or JCM 800 um, stock circuit through to the Jake E. Lee spec uh, model really just kind of only modestly hot rodded um, JCM800, the JKD, there's no extra gain stages. It's really just about um, kind of you know, making the most out of what Marshall had created with the, the 2203, 2204 um, circuit. So uh, what you've just heard is this is a um, USA uh, Deluxe PV Wolfgang. I've got um, Damasio transition pickups in here. This is the, you know, the Steve Lucas, the signature model. I find that standard Wolfgang pickups a bit, a bit hot, I like slightly lower uh, output than that. But similar to um, the what I did with the Marshall Origin quite recently, which um, has clearly been, uh, for me anyway, a fairly popular um, video, and I've had lots of questions about that, about that, and um, a lot of people thanking me for, you know, going, going to the effort of putting um, the instructions together. Um, this video is really about how to mod one of these to that spec. Now you could do that with um, clearly with a Marshall like this, or one of the you know more the reissues, you know 1987X or a, a 1959 Super League um, Marshall. They all have the same preamp in them. Obviously, 50 watt, 100 watt power amp, slightly different. But um, the instructions which I will go through on this video and, and obviously link to in the description. Um, of the clip like I did with the Origin 20, um, will be you'll be able to use that um, to mod your existing amp. This is you could do this with a Serotone um, uh, clone as well, or any of the you know. There's a whole bunch of um, amps you can buy out there that are you know clones of JMPs or you know JCM uh, 800. So uh, you could take any of those and, and do this to it. Um, I was very cautious to mod this amp, you know, it's um, kind of wanted to keep it stock, but um, you know, I can't, I can't leave well enough alone. But um, the good thing about the mods, completely reversible, right, with an amp like this, um, there's nothing I've done here that I couldn't just take out and put it back to stock um, very easily, actually. So, you know, it's a place to start if you're kind of keen on warming up the soldering iron and, and having to go, um, modding one of these or as I said, a clone of one of these circuits. Um, pretty, pretty, pretty easy place to start because, as I said, you know, if you don't like it, you can, you can put it back to stock um, pretty easily. Anyway, um, I hope you get something out of this, and um, yeah, get modern, guys. <laughs> Cheers. Okay, so what I'm showing here is. Um, 
to JCM 800-2204. This is the 50 watt version of the classic you know, JMP JCM 800. Like, bear in mind, you, you probably already know this, but I'll restate it. The JMPs and the early JCM 800s were identical. All right, so the 2203 is the 100 watt, the 2204 is the 50 watt. The preamps, the same. Um, so we'll just quickly go through this and then I'll flick straight over to um, you know the mod the mods that are required to convert this into uh, effectively a, a JK Lee spec um, amp, which is as I mentioned in the section just preceding this is effectively just a you know modestly hot rodded um, JCM 800. So you probably know with an 800, right? It has a low and a high input. The low input bypasses this first gain stage, right? So that's why the low input, if you ever plugged into it, is, is quite clean because you're not getting the effect of a cascaded gain stage, which is what the JCM800 was all about, right? You plug into the high input, your guitar signal comes in through here and hits this first triode. This is V1B. This is one side of the first preamp tube, right? So each 12AX7 has two triodes, or two gain stages, V1A, V1B. All right, so this is the um, one side of the tube, this is the other side. So your guitar signal comes in here, comes out and passes through this 22 nanofarad coupling capacitor and then makes its way up here and when there's nothing in the low input, this, the jack allows the signal to pass through here, through the gain pot, right? Here's the bright cap, one nanofarad bright cap, bright cap on an 800. That's why it's bright, because it's one nanofarad. It's quite a, it's quite a high value, um, but that's what gives it that, you know, that snarl and um, you know that that bite that um, certainly I, I really like. This is the gain pot, as I mentioned, out of the gain pot into the second um, triode, on the second half of the first preamp tube, right? And then through here, through this 22 nanofarad coupling cap, through this, you know, resistor and uh, capacitor, right? All this is doing effectively is um, filtering the signal somewhat so that you get, um, you know, it's filtering some, some bottom end out effectively. This is a voltage divider here, 470K and 470K. Um, helps to keep the signal level down so that you don't overload the third gain stage. Um, which is now we're on to the second preamp tube, V2. This is V2A, the first triode. The signal comes in here um, and gets passed into here. So you can see it joins directly onto V2B. This is the cathode follower. Um, I talked about this in the cathode follower, and you know I talked about it in the in the Origin 20 mod. Uh, that I that I did in terms of you know kind of repurposing the cathode follower and the Origin 24 that was used for the effects loop um, previously to drive what is the tone stack all right the treble bass and middle pots um, which you use on the front of the amp to dial in your EQ the role of the cathode follower is to convert a high impedance signal into a low impedance signal that can then be used to drive the signal through this network here without too much signal loss. Uh, all right. The signal comes off the treble, what we call the wiper, which is the, on a pot, there's always three lugs. The wiper's the one in the middle. Um, and then into the master volume pot, and then out of the, in, out of the master volume pot into, this is the phase inverter. The phase inverter's job is to split the signal into two different um, two different opposite but equal phases which then drive each uh, each of the EL34s um, right so that's a very very simplified kind of view of how your guitar signal makes its way from this high input here through to the power tubes these two guys here and if I flick over to a marked up version of this you can see the mods right to take your amp from stock um, into uh, you know this kind of hot rodded uh, territory for a JCM 800. There's not that many. There's not that many mods, and I mentioned um, it's totally reversible as well. Right, so anything you do here, 
what I'll do in the next section of the video is flick into some you know, detailed pictures of the mods that I made and you can see that all this stuff is quite easily applied and um, quite easily taken out if, um, if you so wish. So the first thing here is this first coupling cap. Remember that your guitar signal, guitar signal comes in through this high input into this first triode and out through this coupling cap it then comes back in through here through the gain pot into the second triode. We're reducing this, it was 22 nanofarad in the stock amp, we're taking it down to 2N2, um, which is obviously one tenth of the value. That knocks out a lot of bottom end, all right? so it keeps the preamp nice and tight um, and it prevents the preamp and the amp itself from getting kind of too much bass and too woolly. You find in high gain amps, if you're not controlling the bass through your circuit design as, you, as your signal goes through the amp, becomes very kind of woolly and um, you lose that you lose the tightness right so the idea here is that you keep it you keep the bass pretty lean in the preamp and then um, try and get some punch back into the amp and the power amp and we'll, we'll come to that all right so through the 2n2 cap your signal goes um, with nothing plugged into the low input as I said that means that the jack will pass the signal through um, to your gain pot. Um, what you'll do with the gain pot is you'll put a 220k resistor off drawn it here it's been a little bit difficult to get it in here because I've had to draw it around with limited space 220k resistor in parallel with the pot you'll see that how to do that when I get to the um, the pictures of the mods um, and then on this uh, second gain stage right we're going to do something to change this 10k resistor if I just go back for a second this is a stock amp this 10k cathode resistor sets up what is called a, a cold clipper um, which basically means that this tube here is in a kind of cold bias setup what you get from that is asymmetric clipping which is you know sounds sounds like it's the sound of rock and roll right um, but it's not it's not massive gain you, you get you know if you played an 800 or a, you know a, a JMP you'll know that you get you know you get ACDC kind of levels of gain out of it and it's um, you know it's been used on countless records right it's, a, it's an amazingly classic sound but it's not it's not high gain or it's not you know it's not really kind of pushing into into high gain levels so um, you can do a lot with the second triode to produce more gain out of it, right? And the and the way you do that is effectively um, reducing the value of this cathode resistor here, so that the tube becomes a bit like this one, really, actually, but like the first one. And you get more gain out of it, which then will in turn drive um, the next gain stage and so on. And so, to do this in a way that is makes it completely reversible, you leave the 10k resistor in place. And you're going to put a 3k3 resistor or a, or a 4k7 something around that value right because you want to basically get it to the point where this resistor this new resistor in parallel with the existing 10k will give you 2k7 or 2.7k right more or less you know in that in that ballpark um, and you'll also bypass it with a 0.68 microfarad capacitor just like this one is all right so you're basically replicating Six, 680 nano is the same as 0.68 micro, right? I know the notation's different, it's the same value. You're gonna set this second uh, second gain stage cathode set up to be the same as this one. And you're doing it by adding components, we're not taking anything out of the existing PCB, right? Which is why I said everything's reversible. This all stays stock, so you can say your signal's gonna come through here into the uh, V2A, so we're now into the third gain stage. Um, you leave your 820 ohm resistor in place and you're gonna put a 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitor in there. This fattens up the tone, right? So if you've ever studied or listened to, um, you know, experts talk about Eddie's amp and, you know, his, his famous Plexi, the number one amp, there's effectively only one, maybe two mods made, made to that amp from stock. Um, and this is the probably the most uh, the most famous one is the the fat cap. Right? This this definitely you know increases the gain and and the fatness of the third gain stage. Now 
Anything above 22, you know, I think Eddie's amp had something like 470 microfarad or 220 microfarad, that that order of magnitude, right? But 22 is fine here. Um, if you've got if you've got a few components laying around and it's a bit higher value than this, just use it. It'll be it'll be fine, right? Um, I use a 22 microfarad, um, but I have used and here I've used 220s and and um, it's all it's all good, right? Um, Okay, into the cathode follower, which is driving the tone stack, as I said. So the mod here is a 470 picofarad capacitor to ground on that cathode. So what this is doing is just dumping a bit of, bit of very high end frequencies to ground. Um, and just takes a bit of that um, bit of ice pick, you know, kind of high level um, frequencies and filters them out of your, uh, of your guitar signal as it moves through the amp. All right, that is all of the mods to the preamp it's only as i said it's only a handful right this is not a difficult mod to make to your amp um, moving into the power amp um, section of the amplifier um, this line here where i've got four ohm written this 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 signal wire here comes off the the output selector this is your negative feedback line right what negative feedback is as you probably already know, it's taking some of the signal, tapping some of the signal um, as it's passing through to the speakers and feeding it back into the amp. And you can see it comes in here. This is from the up, the impedance selector through here and back into the phase inverter actually. So your guitar signal comes in this side of the phase inverter and the negative feedback makes its way into the other side and it's out of phase with your guitar signal so it actually negative feedback as the name implies right it's actually cancelling out um, some of your signal as it comes through here and it, it keeps the amp under control and it times it up um, so you can do a lot here to actually control the feel and the brightness of the amp with negative feedback so anyway for the mods required for um, the Jakey Lee spec JCM800 what you're going to do here is you're going to put a 220k resistor. This is all new. This doesn't exist in the stock amp, right? So just see that, all right? It's not there. Um, again, I'll show you in the photos how to, how to wire that in. Really easy. This is a 220k resistor in parallel with a 4N7 um, poly cap. And this is a fixed depth circuit, right? So this gives you, remember I said we're going to filter bottom end out of the preamp up here but in the power amp we want the bottom end to come back in this gives you um, the depth right so if you've ever played an amp with a resonance control or a depth pot um, sometimes called thump that's what this is um, but it's fixed in other words it's at a fixed level the 220k resistor is, is it's obviously a fixed resistor not adjustable you can certainly put this on a pot you could get rid of that 220k resistor and wire it into a, an adjustable depth pot. Typically, you'd use a one meg linear um, to do that. Um, but you know, if you can tweak it, you can set it at 220k. This is this is an excellent start. If you find it too much, just reduce the value of this resistor. If you want more, move it up. Try try a 330k um, resistor and so on. And in the stock amp, it's a 100k negative feedback. Um, resistor here you can move that down to 47 what this will do is allow more negative feedback to come in um, which basically means that the the effect of the depth circuit and the presence and the overall tightness of the amp uh, will go up a little bit um, if you want the amp to be a bit brighter and a bit more um, I guess like the like the stock amp you can just leave that as 100k um, which is you know the default value like that right which is what I did I think I'll go to the photos and check but I, I, I'm pretty sure I left that at 100k to be honest um, and yeah that's it guys pretty straightforward okay now when it comes to wiring these mods in as I said um, I've done it in such a way that it's completely reversible what we're looking at here is the stock 2203. So my 1980 JMP, um, which you've seen in the video, this is um, 
This is how she looks on the inside. So this is a, a Marshall ST, ST1 board. These boards, these simple PCBs, we used in all of these Marshalls from, um, you know, as soon as they moved away from turret boards uh, in the uh, late 70s uh, to PCB based uh, amps, which obviously they, they still do to this day. This Marshall ST1 board, you know, is kind of the backbone of, of all those early Marshalls. And, and this board can either do a straight up four hole plexi or it can do the JCM 800, you know, 2203, 2204 style circuit. And you can see even the chassis, right? It's drilled out for four inputs here, as you'd see in a four hole Marshall. And you can see the unused components on the board here. Um, these are set up for you know the um, the four inputs right the bright channel the high treble channel and the and the normal channel and through a couple of very simple you know and pretty minor changes to how you wire it up um, you convert it use the same PCB and you can do a, a, a an 800 with it which is obviously what the SEMP is or you know a JMP as I mentioned um, so. Uh, moving to the mods, so the first thing we're going to look at is how to um, how to put in the um, the change to the 10k cathode uh, resistor on the second gain stage, the one I referred to as the cold clipper stage. This is the 10k resistor here. All right, so this is um, this is the 10k resistor that is um, running. It's actually on V. 1A, this is V1A here, this side of the tube, this is V1B on this side. The yellow wire is the cathode of V1A, and it comes along from this pin up to the board here through this 10K resistor and to ground. Right, so this is the black wire takes it to ground. Chassis is ground. So uh, per the schematic, we need to add a resistor and a 0.68 microfarad uh, bypass cap to that and this is how I did it I'm using a uh, 4k7 uh, resistor here you could use a 4k7 or a 3k3 uh, per the schematic no problem you you know not not too too different um, obviously the 3k3 will get you a, um, a lower value resistor and uh, potentially you know, slightly more gain but uh, I'd say it'd be marginal and you can see I've just put the um, this is a 0.68 electrolytic 100 volt capacitor and it's in parallel with the uh, 4k7 resistor here and um, I've used this is a spare slot right as I mentioned these PCBs were used for four hole plexi builds as well and in the 800 or JMP um, 2203 uh, this slot here is not used but you can see you can actually see the copper on the under on the underlying side of the PCB it's, it's connected to this 10k resistor here so perfect slot you can just whack that in right I had to lift the board um, to get the soldering iron in under that so you know these standoffs here there's a you know a few of them on the board you need to take off four um, you'll be able to lift the board up and get get the iron in underneath here just enough to get these um, soldered in on the underside of the board um, I didn't have to take any of the wiring off the PCB to, to do that the other option, if you don't want to take the board out at all, is to simply pre-wire this arrangement here and then connect it into these legs on this 10K resistor. You'll see as I go through some of the other photos, that's what I've done with some of the other mods. You get the legs of this little um, this little parallel setup here and you could um, you know, uh, hook them in underneath the legs of this 10K resistor and solder them in. It'll have the same effect. Um, okay, moving along. That's just obviously another photo of the same thing. This is the 0.68 microfarad um, cap that's already there. So on V1B uh, in the schematic, which is the first triode as shown, it's in reverse order. Okay, on the schematic, um, this is the this is just the 0.68 microfarad. So I'm using a 0.68 as well, but I'm using the electrolytic cap. Um, I prefer the tone of these things. I could have pulled this out, right, and thrown one of these as well. But my aim here 
was to mod the amp in a way that made it completely reversible. I don't want to take anything out or you know do any kind of damage to you know what is now you know 1980. What is it? It's a 40 year old amp, 41 year old amp. I didn't want to uh, tinker with it um, too much. All right, moving along. Um, now, one of the one of the things here is I said right at the beginning of when I looked at the schematic is there's a 22 nanofarad coupling cap that comes off um, V1B, and we need to change that to a 2N2. But in the spirit of again not modding the amp at all, uh, I found a way around implementing that 2N2 without modding the PCB at all. This red cap here. This is the 22 nanofarad stock capacitor. Right? And the audio signal comes in through here, um, through this pink wire, and up onto this lug of what is the low, this is the low input here. Right? So what I simply did is this pink wire, and you can have a look at the photos of the stock amp, it actually will connect straight up to this lug on this jack here right so you'll melt that solder you'll pull this wire off the jack and in series here this is a 2n2 cap right so you end up with the same effect right so the 22 nanofarad cap here lets the full signal through comes in here and the 2n2 cap filters out the bottom end which is what I wanted it to do right so um, get rid of some base out of the preamp and as I said, you know, in the power amp section, we'll bring the base back. So by doing it this way, um, you've modded the amp again without hacking through this PCB at all. Reverse the mod, take the cap out, reconnect the pink wire, you're done. Okay, um, the next thing is there's a 220K resistor, um, which needs to be set in parallel with the gain pot. This is the gain pot here. The very first one, the preamp, right? On a JMP. So here's my 220k resistor. And you can run it from this side of the pot to this side. This is ground and this is the input to the pot. So by doing wiring your resistor in like that, you've you've accomplished what you need to do. Um, and again, easily reversible in the event. Um, you need to back it out. Um, that is just another photo, yeah, closer up of the of the two in two cap. We'll move right along, and another photo of our two twenty k resistor, right, in parallel with the preamp or gain pot, and another one, fantastic. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is there was a 22 microfarad. This is the fat cap, all right, 22 microfarad electrolytic cap that um, is going to sit in parallel with what is an 820 ohm resistor, all right? Um, this is the, uh, the cathode resistor of the third gain stage, V2A on the schematic, and you'll see it's labeled 820R. Um, and again, very simply, right, reversible and doesn't require any cutting or modding of the PCB. You're going to get this 22 microfarad electrolytic and just solder it to each leg. Electrolytic caps do have polarity, right? So there's a negative side and a positive side. So you need to make sure you get the negative side on this end of the board. Right, this is going to ground on this side. And this is the positive side. You do not want to reverse that and get it the wrong way around. Um, and then moving along, there's a 470 picofarad cap that's going to sit in parallel with the 100K resistor that's on the cathode of V2B. This is a 100K resistor right here. And this is my 470 picofarad um, cap that, again, is just soldered in to each leg of the resistor without having to you know, change anything that was stock um, on the board. Same thing from a different angle. There's our 22 
microfarad and our 470 picofarad at the back. Okay, now moving along into the power amp section, this is the negative feedback. What we're seeing here, this is the impedance uh, selector for the amp. All right, these are the speaker jacks, um, and the speaker jacks connect to the impedance selector here. This purple wire is the negative feedback line. All right, and the stock amp, that, that purple wire just is soldered directly onto that lug right there. It's the 4 ohm tap. Uh, on the impedance selector. So again, you'll melt the solder, you'll pull the um, the purple wire off, and you'll insert, this is our 4N7 in parallel with a 220K resistor. There it is there. Um, more close up picture, right? So you can see these are you know knitted together, soldered into the lug of the impedance, and a little bit of heat shrink here um, that's put on uh, keep it all nice and tidy there's a 4 in 7 cap in our 220k and the purple wire and then negative feedback this is our fixed depth right so you, now you've got a depth circuit in, in the amp and it'll give you a nice bit of bit of thump in the bottom end um, and Last but not least, this is not on the schematic, but I just wanted to point it out because if anyone looks at my photos, they might say, well, what is that resistor there doing? This resistor here that I've stuck over the top of the stock resistor is a bias adjustment. So when I bought this amp, um, it had um, the bias, I measured the bias in it, and the bias was very, very low. It was, it was you know, very, very cold, and it sounded pretty, pretty ordinary, to be honest. Um, someone at some point had put um, six CA7 uh, power tubes in this thing, um, which I was pretty pretty pleased about actually, given that that's what Eddie supposedly had in the number one uh, plexi. Um, but I think that the way the amp is set up, it was set up for six L6 tubes. I, I, my guess is, is that it was originally delivered into the US, this amp. Um, and so I needed to just put this resistor in parallel to get my bias adjustment into range so I could bias up these tubes correctly. Um, and yeah, once I did that, the amp just, yeah, just you know, moved, to, moved to a whole new level. Um, and here we are with just a picture of, of, of the whole thing, right? So with the mods in place, and you can see everything from the uh the change to the first um, cathode setup um, through to the 2n2 uh, cap here um, through to the 220k resistor in parallel on the gain pot a 22 microfarad here on the 820r resistor 470 picofarad here in parallel with the 100k resistor that's um, stock and um, right across over into our fixed depth um, circuit in here. I did say when I went through the schematic that you know you can change the negative feedback resistor, which is in the stock amp is 100k. You can move that to 47k. It would give you more negative feedback, right? So the amp will be a little bit, a little bit tighter, a little bit darker. Um, the effect of the depth and the presence controls will be a little bit more um, pronounced. Um, it's this is the hundred. This is the stock negative feedback resistor here. It's a hundred k. Okay, so if you wanted to make that forty seven k without, again without modifying the amp, just get another hundred k resistor, right? And get that hundred k resistor and wire it over the top of it in parallel, and your two hundred k resistors will have the, you know, the equivalent in parallel will become fifty k, and you know you, you you're right on the money there. So, have an easy way to do it without. Um, without making any changes to the stock amp. Um, all right, that's that's the end of the kind of uh, the photos and the mods, guys. Um, like I did with the Origin 20, these will go up on my website. Um, I'll include all the photos. There are a lot more that I've taken than these of the stock amp and also the mod. Um, and I'll include a document with part numbers to what is literally a handful of components um, that you can order from. Uh, from Mousa, and um, yeah, um, I'd recommend these these mods to your JMP or your JMP clone, your JCM800 clone, 
um, or the real deal. Um, this is all staying in my amp, definitely. All right, guys, cheers.